there. Welcome. Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Business One. Lovely to see you. The, the newcomers and all our regulars, happy days for you. It's getting better out there. The sun is almost coming out. We can almost go inside instead of freezing outside with a cold glass or something. So it's all, it's all good. It's all getting better. Welcome. We've got a fabulous guest that we're going to introduce later, Jill McKay, who's all things neuroscience. So tune in, join in the chat. And we're waiting for Sam. Well, I rather is blonde, but we don't know where she is at the moment. So hopefully she's wait. She's got a new puppy, and she's got building works going on. It's a bit bit chaotic there. So let's just go around the room and see how your week's been. How are you, Kim? Yeah, good. Thank you. It's been a it's it's been a good week. It's been nice. We've been told every day. I keep looking at the weather forecast, and it says it's going to pitch it down every day. And yet we've been really fortunate. I've managed to walk my little girl to nursery every day. I'm on a I'm on a bit of a um, bit mind, bit body, trying to try to get rid of the lockdown lumber. If I'm really honest, um, so we've been we've kind of been walking to walking to nursery and managing to navigate the storms, and it does make you feel better, doesn't it, to get that bit of fresh air in the morning and that thinking time. And um, I've been really decadent. I've listened to an audio book every single day, so I feel like I'm really actually um, maximizing my opportunity to level up. I think. That's brilliant. You know, I was listening to a, a program about the mind and doing one thing to improve the mind. And if you exercise and listen to something, you're doubling up your brain and your body's functioning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think you're certainly doing something good. <laughs> so not just going to the gym, but but listening to something or watching something or reading something on a screen while you're exercising is a double whammy. Good stuff. Oh, yeah, well done. Uh, Penny, how's your week been? It's been good, actually. I mean, you know, usual some challenges along the way. And I'm saying I'll talk about it at the end, actually. I went to an acupuncturist to try and just keep some of my uh, at bay. But, um, do you know, something I'm hearing a lot about, literally, I mean, it's in my world, but it's also in all the worlds of my clients, is this subject of lead generation. And that's something that I'm really been focusing on a lot this week for people. Because we're stifled, we can't, you know, GDPR has really stifled a lot of people. All the Facebook, LinkedIn are squeezing things to death. Um, and I, I learned from Thomas during the pandemic, I can't remember exact statistic, but Google's uh, in Q1 last year compared to Q1 this year, Google have gone up by 10 billion pounds in a quarter. And that's purely yeah. trying to do pay per click and desperately trying to find how they can find customers. Um, and so, you know, that's been a really, oh, there's Sam. That's been um, a really big thing that I'm sort of researching into. Um, but, you know, what I really believe, and I constantly bang on about it, is this power of, I've just got to go know Jill, and I'm sure I'm going to become a, a client of Jill's, the power of conversation in small communities like this or bigger, you know, communities that you can trust. The referrals that you can get, and I interviewed a guy called John Keel this week, and he talked about, you know, the principles of life remain the same it's just the techniques change and i think if we just get back to some of the press principles of deep conversation to get uh, lead gen going so that's where i've been really thinking it's interesting i mean i i've been looking into the hedonic treadmill which i'm sure jill knows about which is when we have something that upsets us like the last year we are up here and down there and then we go back to our default so we're all finding our hedonic treadmill again which is, you know, finding that space amid the kind of choppy waters again. I think that's why some of us are up and some of us are kind of still drifting around a little bit. Yeah, God, I have I have low energy moments. Even on this show, you know, I'll come on and you'll notice my energy's low and then, and, you know, yeah. it's about accepting well, that, isn't it? Welcome, Sam. We were about to send out a search party. You've got a puppy, you've got building works. What's happening? I'm so sorry, lovelies. Um, yeah, I, would, I just, we've got a slight gas issue, um, but I was just quickly sorting. Um, so, yeah, Did apologies. Eat something bad last night. I'm sorry. <laughs> eat something oh. bad. <laughs> so, do you want to briefly say how your week's been, Sam? My week's been great, thank you very much. Obviously, it was a slow week, uh, slow starting because of the bank holiday. Um, I've been to the salon. So that made me feel so much better and more human. Um, did a bit of retail therapy, which I'm not a shopper. That's not something that normally floats my boat, but it was quite nice just to do a bit of shopping. 
Um, but yeah, no, my, my week's been great. I find my clients are really positive right now. It's a real sense of, come on, let's go and achieve. Oh. Yeah, really great. That's really good. I'm really glad because some people are hitting the wall of kind of what I think of sort of a long COVID sense of ennui. It's going on and on and on and we still can't get back out there. But some people are raring to go on the B of the bang, as it were. And someone who I know is always raring to go. See this see this effortless segue I'm doing now on the B of the bang is Jill McKay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> on the G of the Jill, um, Jill is a powerhouse of all things neuroscience. She is the co-founder of My Brain International and design, I'm just reading your bio here, of the neuro, Neurometric Profiling Instrument, M-I-N-D. Jill helps coaches, which she does, trainers, HR and business professionals to amplify their results through using neuroscience in their work. And this book is the Bible, um, which Jill wrote, best-selling book, which is the handbook, Brain Smart Insights for Coaches. I, I recommend this to all of my student coaches. It is absolutely all, all, awesome. And she's a best-selling author now, Jill. So welcome to Business Blondes. Fantastic Thank to have you here. So, um, so many wonderful, interesting things to talk about. But tell us exactly how you got into the world of neuroscience and how My Brain International came about. What's your background? How did you get there? So, well, first of all, thank you for welcoming me so warmly and bigging me up. I love it. An effortless segue. Fantastic. <laughs> so I've been in the learning and development world in its broadest sense for more than 30 years. I kind of landed. I was lucky to land in that, that career and I've absolutely loved it. You know, I'm all about that enabling other people to be the best that they can be. I know, broadly speaking, we're all in that same, same, same arena. Um, and then within a corporate role, I was running a leadership academy about 25 years ago and I, I was working with my opposite number in, in America and he was really interested in the brain so I, I absolutely you know hail him for getting me involved in this whole area of neuroscience and I just realized that it gave people a different perspective a different frame an additive frame if you like on their learning when we were, were operating in the leadership academy and in any other development arena whether it was in group situations or one-to-one -to, -one, to help people to understand what was actually going on on at a brain level help them to start to understand that oh yes change is actually possible and of course 25 years ago we didn't know what we know now so it was exciting then and it's even more exciting now so my brain international came out when i left the corporate world and that was um, precipitated by my third child it was just one of those got to leave the corporate world, got to start my own stuff. Um, originally started my own consultancy, my own training development consultancy, but then met somebody from my previous corporate job uh, again. And we reunited, we very much have the same aspect of same perspective. Now he's a sales guy. He was a, a big wig board member sales guy in an insurer. And he brought me in to do some training about stepping into your client's brain. The rest is history. We joined together and we are all about um, offering training to help people in a wide variety of disciplines, but predominantly the development arena, coaches and trainers, how to use neuroscience to help your clients get even better results. Ooh, can't hear you there, Caroline. <laughs> it's always one, isn't there? Sorry, it's always <laughs> <me>. <laughs> It's usually um, me. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying Penny's itching to ask so many questions about this fascinating subject because it's a bit funny, like the brain is now fashionable. What was it before then? So, so kind of add on to our body. And yet suddenly it's <laughs> everything. You know, suddenly everyone's talking about the brain and wanting to know what is really going on in there, how yeah. we can make these changes, yeah. what happens to the brain when we make these changes. Because yeah. otherwise, yeah. everything's just like a band-aid over issues in our life. What you want to make is real systemic change. So, and how does that happen? So anyone got any questions for Jill about this in, in, intoxicating, <laughs> fabulous subject? Yeah, well, it really is. And Jill, we had 15 minutes beforehand and I sort of fell in love with you in that time because I, I am. I'm sort of, oh, God, why don't you all go away and let me just do it myself? <laughs> so, so listen, I went to, I decide, I've been hideously independent all my life. Didn't think, I didn't go, didn't have a coach, didn't have, didn't go anywhere, didn't ask people for help, didn't ask friends for help, just 
didn't as a child didn't have my mum and dad to help me I used to sit and solve problems on my bed myself okay so this is an independence that is also such a negative aspect to myself and I finally in 2018 I decided to go I will go to a psychologist I had a frightening experience that meant I needed to so what I really needed sitting in that room is for them to help me believe the brain you know really help me understand what's going on that's why you know I and I, I suppose that's why it's become fashionable is it are people more and more curious about it because we've we, we really want to know what's we want to uncover it all don't we I think we do. And, you know, fantastic that you went and wanted to talk it out. So I think there are many factors at play here. I, you know, the, the brain neuroscience, neuro nonsense as well, where stuff's distorted. It, it's really transporting into our news feeds, isn't it? It's there. It's available. There's so much more available in the press. But that, a lot of that is because due to the advent of technology, you know, we no longer have to cut up or dead brains or look at really, really extreme neurological patients to get any information. Technology has allowed us to marry up with the work of psychologists to take a look at the, almost excuse my language, the normal functioning human brain in day-to-day -day activities. So there's more information available about day-to-day -day activities, how we are when we're in an, a, a typical argument, an emotional crisis, how we are when we're um, uh, going to the supermarket, how we are when we're, you were talking before, about lead generating so what happens in that neuro selling arena how we are when we're operating with a client so many different scenarios we're now able to understand a little bit more so i think that information is more accessible and people are beginning to realize oh this could be useful now having said that i will raise a little bit of wave a little bit of a red flag fashion is fashion and fashion can fade um, and it's very topical neuroscience and I do think that there's a lot of neuro nonsense around as well there's a lot of distortion as there will be in any fashionable topic so we will pick up certain publications or in our news feed we might read that there's been this wonderful piece of singular research that therefore tells us if we take this magic pill we will no longer experience this trauma or we will lose magically 40 pounds before the end of the season you know there, there is a lot of distortion but I think there's enough out there to engender curiosity and I think people realize that um that it's a really interesting area because after all don't we all intuitively want to know what makes us tick you know surely there's nothing more exciting than understanding a bit more about that Jill, do you remember a while ago we did when we could go to a nightclub? We we did a talk in Mayfair uh, in a nightclub when there was probably a hundred yeah. under twenty fives in there, That's right. and the level of interest that the younger generation had in emotions, in yeah. personal development, how yeah. the brain works. I have great hope for the new for the future because these yes. young people are coming up and they're not just taking things as read. They want to change things and they want to find out what's going on inside. Yes, I know. I know Sam's very interested in that. Yes. The younger generation coming up with their lovely new uh, yeah. perspectives on life. Yeah, I think you're right. And I think when whenever I work with a client and we talk, um, you know, I use personality profiling software with all of my clients. And whenever I do that session, they are just poised in hanging on to every word because it's fascinating people are fascinated by other people aren't they and we all are we, you know how to learning how what how and what makes each individual tick and trigger and drives and all of that you know i think i find fascinating and i know as i say just by having that one session on how to i mean it's a communication tool what what i use but because it's talking about people and their brain and their different personality types and people find it so fascinating and i think you're right caroline the younger generation are far more in tune with emotional intelligence than the older generation mm. far more in tune with that. They're, they're less accepting aren't they i mean i look at my father who's 93 i can't believe how he accepts being unhappy but you know he just it's he's it's that generation they didn't do that and he's been through so many traumas but he would never consider going and getting help mm -hmm. he has it all inside him but we're, we're, I'm not accepting of it. I've got a very damaged brain. I mean, 11 years of quite chronic stress, my brain's damaged. And I know that I am now always going to be triggered by certain things. But yes. then, I, you know, then I'll go to someone and I'll help get somebody like I would if I went to a physiotherapist with a leg that was damaged. I have to go and get myself sorted. What, can yes. I, what are the principles of STUCK, the book? 
The principles behind Stuck, I wanted to share my coaching stories. So it's it's a little bit of a brain, thank you so much, a little bit of a brain primer. So the first part is this is what's going on at your, your in your brain at a very high helicopter view. You know, it's, it's not an autopsy neuroscientist definition. But part two is where I wanted to share different coaching stories from genuine coaching clients where, with, who came to me for different um, presenting issues and how I use neuroscience in the conversation to help unstick them to help um, to help them progress in some way so there's a chapter around motivation there's a chapter around negative uh, negative feelings something around stress there's one about loneliness it's still actually really you know comes to me when I when I think about that chapter in that particular client it was very gracious of them to allow me to share their stories but all I wanted to do was to help encourage other coaches to understand that you know you don't have to be a Harvard educated or Stanford educated master's PhD level postdoctorate neuroscientist to be able to use this readily available stuff in business. That's one of the things we do in our business is we curate what is coming out of all these amazing institutions and sift and sort what could be useful for, for translation into, into um, the business world. So the premise of Stuck is to um, enable coaches to, to just see that they can use this great stuff that's out there and becoming more and more accessible um, in their world and in the world at large. Kim, you, you, work, you work as a leadership coach. Are you seeing this show up in what you do? Yeah, and it's it's fascinating, Jill. I could actually literally all say because I think obviously at, at our base, you know, human beings want to be listened to, they want to be understood, and they want to be respected. And the more that we can actually communicate better to listen to understand. I mean, I've just literally qualified to um, be a face whisperer, so reading the fa uh, the micro expressions, which can last one twenty fifth of a second. But obviously, the um, the way we feel acts twenty four percent faster than the way we think. So even if we're trying to hide our feelings, actually we can't because our feelings uh, interact so much so much quicker. So understanding all of these and how and how the brain works to be able to ask better questions and to um, really demonstrate that listening is so vital, isn't it, to helping people become the best that they can be. Would you agree? I 100% agree with that. And something I mean, I'm fascinated with what you're qualifying in, how amazing. And what you say is so pertinent is one of the things that I think really helps people become unstuck when they understand that in every decision, it, it, your, the information will flood through your emotional segments of your brain before it gets to the rational parts of your brain. If, we, if we're talking regions, you know, that actually it almost gives people permission to start talking about their emotions. You know, 80% of the, the neurons we believe you know everything changes all the time in neuroscience but a big number of neurons operate in our waking moments in the more emotional regions of the brain and, it, and they're accessed faster and it really matters and I think going back to what Sam was saying as well about that whole um, people understanding themselves and, and younger people being more savvy perhaps or more uh, demanding maybe of, of awareness um, I, I wish we taught this stuff in schools I really do I wish we would you yeah, know what's stopping us doing that because it's I think the gift of awareness and the gift of gift of these nuggets of knowledge it, it's so high isn't it it, it brings mm -hmm. people great um, traction in their lives and great something different to to think about as they progress and make choices and decisions for themselves I completely agree and then and we're born with it aren't we you know I mean, my poor little girl bless her she's four and a half oh. and she became my absolute study through my through my training because I just analyzed her face bless her little yeah. heart time she was doing anything I was like hmm this is the emotion you're showing even if you're telling mummy it's something else entirely because we're born with these things and we learn how to do something different but if we yes. talk them this then you know imagine how effective they'd be at yeah. communicating and understanding and empathizing and maybe that might help us with the challenges we've got in diversity and inclusion yeah, absolutely. I, I agree with all of that. I think that's so interesting. And when if we think about learning and, and back to, you know, your your little girl's age and even younger, we learn through mimicry. You know, we we copy people, we 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 learn. And so having those really positive role models and those those messages absolutely from a really young age, they would help us to grow into a, a 
perhaps more authentic, more grounded at the same time person with that broader perspective. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're very much talking the same, the same language, absolutely. And yeah. Jill, can I ask what you've got your book? How do we, how do people access you? I want you in my pocket. So if you want me in your pocket, <laughs> you'd be, you'd be, how do people come to me? So yeah, how do people, what's the process of getting you, your knowledge and, and having help from you? Okay, so there's several ways to do that. So obviously the book, um, and um, I, I'm also, uh, one of the things I really have learned over the last few years is, you know, I think for a while I really was the world's biggest secret. So I show up every day on LinkedIn. So I open a lot of conversations on LinkedIn. That has been a wonderful platform to connect with, with more people as well. But connect with me via email and we can talk about potentially one-to-one -one coaching. Do, or oh, right, so, you do, so you do one-to-one -one coaching and then yeah. you one-to-one yeah. -one coaching and then we have an applied neuroscience qualification um which is which latterly note my language was three days face to face in a room <laughs> with real life people but we are bringing that online so we qualify people in how to use neuroscience in coaching conversations in training interventions and we have interested in what sam was saying before we have this neurometric tool called mind so we also use profiling ours is underpinned by neuroscience research it plays in exactly the same space as yours will sam and all the others that we all know but ours is underpinned by by neuroscience and helps people to understand understand their preferences so where they are most likely to go to to reach a conclusion to um come to a, a decision or make an interpretation when information streams into their nervous system so as we all know some of us have a preference for being more analytical some of us have a preference for being more naturally empathetic and trying things on for size and more values based others of us really need the detail otherwise we get stress others of us just like to play and i imagine kim that your little girl just likes to play if i can give you anything keep her playing <laughs> keep, we all need to play and we lose that so often so what our instrument does and our training therefore does is it enables our coaches to be able to use our instrument instrument but what it does is it gives people a language for their preferences and therefore their strengths and it gives them this is a big thing to say but permission to be them I, I also that's brilliant Jill you really summed it up beautifully but also I think it gives them hope oh, because yeah. you know because when we work as coaches helping our clients change a lot of people say well that's how I am this is how it is this is how I've always been and you say well actually I've got some really good news for you in, in 60 to 90 days, we can rewire some of this and it isn't how it is and it isn't going to be stuck, which is what your book is called, of course. Um, but it's like that is the hope that you can give people. It may seem like this is who I am and how I am and I can't change, but you can and positively and for the better. And neuroscience talks you through those steps to creating those changes in a really realistic and understandable way. Yeah, I completely, I completely agree. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Penny, sorry. I, I was going to say, I, lo I love that, Carolyn, because all the time we hear, don't we, is what it is. And I hate that expression with a vengeance because it, it doesn't have to be. And that just means that you're accepting what you're given. And like you say, Carolyn, we can reprogram. We can, we can think differently. We can behave differently. We can be somebody else. You know, that doesn't mean we're disingenuous, but we can be somebody else. We don't have to accept, you know, so that expression, oh, it is what it is. That's that's an excuse for me. That just lets it all off the hook. <laughs> or that's how I am and I can't change. Well, you can change if you want to. Yeah. Obviously, we only work with clients who want to change and believe that they can. But yeah. working with coaches, it's such a lovely, reassuring message that this is how the brain works. And this is how coaching works, helping people to change their lives, their habits, and even their personalities if they want to. Absolutely. Yes. I think I agree with everything you say. And I think one of the things that that neuroscience gives to clients with coaches is the fact that they they can understand that at a physiological level, it someday it's not going to be all that effort that it is up front because we will start to carve out neural pathways for our new habits. We'll start mm. to reward ourselves differently through repetition and practice. And then we'll seek and anticipate a different reward. 
at the beginning, creating change is a little bit harder. Well, we all know that. If we're, we wouldn't, if we were starting a running regime, go straight for the marathon. We wouldn't think we were going to drop a stone in a week. We know it's more effort, but then we get into a pattern. The brain loves patterns. So changing habits is about laying down new patterns at the beginning, more deliberately and consciously. And then all of a sudden, you'll find that actually that was a little bit easier. Yeah. So that, that's the hope you give people. But and it is with it. lovely. So you mentioned earlier this that you said step into your client's brain. Is that a course you do? Is that it's, it's not a specific course that we we, we do yet. Um, however, we we have actually run some customized programs for some clients in the sales mm -hmm. arena where they're wanting their sales guys to be able to literally step into their client's world and start to look outside. Um, you'd think the salespeople would do it intuitively, <laughs> you know, but to look outside and, and th therefore understand that their services are not about them. Their services are around their clients. Yeah, so, really, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we've worked with some people who have worked in sales training to help them with that that um, program. But you've given me an idea there, Penny. Thank you. <laughs> I, like I can see my clients really benefiting from that. I yeah. really like it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we, unfortunately, we're almost out of time. But what we'd like to do, Jill, as we go around the room at the end, is maybe share a little tip, um, something uh, that you could do today or to think about in the next few days to sort of help yourself or... I don't know, just share a bit of uh, best practice or a bit of hope for, for our, 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 our listeners. Um, so let's go to Kim first. What Have you got a little tip for us or a little meme this week, Kim? Yeah, I guess mine is, is um, to listen to understand. I think too often we listen to interject and we miss out on an opportunity to really learn something. So suspend your own voice and just <laughs> listen love that suspend your own voice and listen because listening is an act of love sam i love that kim yeah i really do um i think i'm, I'm going to go with the, the positive note that i started on and i just think that you know just be aware of who's around you and now is the time if, if you're having that glimpse of positivity don't let that be sucked out with negativity by a neg ferret as i call them someone that's going to come and hoover all that positivity out of you so surround yourself with positive people who's your courage who's your yeah your influencer who's your inspiration who's your challenger who's your corrector but find those roles around your support network and really tap into them right now I know we've got a lot of them in the room right now, Sam. Thank you. Penny. Well, I mentioned earlier that I went to an acupuncture yesterday and he told me to be much sillier. And we ended up getting onto the subject of how everybody's so focused on performance in every area of their life. And he said that he went out for a gentle bike ride with a friend. The friend arrived with Leica and serious helmet and his, his Strava on his thing. And he said, we've got to get here by here. And he said, I just think that so many of my clients that are coming to me, they're just structuring every area of their life around performing and achieving. And so um, I would say just think about that for yourself and maybe have an area of your life where you're just a bit silly. That's what I'm doing now. Just thought. Silly. You're talking my language. I always keep um, uh, a tube of bubbles in my car. So if I'm in a traffic jam and everyone's sitting there like this, I wind the window down. And blow bubbles oh, out no, the window. No. Always get someone laughing. Jill, have you got a little tip for us? Yeah, I, I was thinking about this because I knew this was coming. I've watched your program. And um, for me, it's all about showing up as the real you. And I think that so matters in this world. This world is full of this new word, comparisonitis. Well, you know, we're not anybody else. Like I can hear my mum's words in my head. Be yourself because everyone else is taken. I now, I've that. subsequently found that on the internet it's being attributed to Einstein. Mum never admitted <laughs> that whether it is Einstein or not, we'll never know, but I can hear my mum saying, be yourself because everyone else is taken. I love that. My simple tip is go to Poundland, six, six tubes of bubbles a pound. What love price of happiness and happiness. So I'll go over to Kim to wind up today's fabulous business blondes. Thank you, Kim. Oh, bless you. Thank you. Jill, it's been an absolute delight. We could chat to you all day. And I think you're right. We've just got to go out there and have a little bit more fun. And it's amazing what that does to uplift us. So if you would like to um, join us and be in Jill's chair, then please do get in touch with us at www.businessblondes.tv. And in the interim, take care, stay safe, have fun.
Go get some bubbles. Until next time. <laughs>